Jeff, God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Austin. It is so good to be here at New Hope this morning. I just thank the Lord for his presence that has filled this place. Thank God that you brought Jesus with you. And if you didn't, you're meeting him this morning because he is here in this place. My family and I, we have been missionaries to Tanzania since 2001, and we are grateful to be New Hope's missionaries to Tanzania and beyond. My wife, Wendy, she came to Christ and was called to be a missionary at the age of five through her church's bus and children's ministry. I came to Christ during vacation Bible school following my kindergarten year. I was called into full-time ministry in second grade and knew that the Lord was calling me into missions as I entered into eighth grade. And when Wendy and I, we first made our way to Tanzania, we went with a two-year-old and a nine-month-old, and now we have three boys and three girls proving that the soil of Tanzania is rich and fertile <laughs> for getting a crop of children. <laughs> Well, you may be wondering, where in the world is Tanzania? Tanzania is in East Africa. It is south of Kenya and north of Malawi and Mozambique. It's right on the Indian Ocean. And there in Tanzania, we have the snow-capped peak of Mount Kilimanjaro, which is the highest point on the continent of Africa. And then there's the Serengeti, which is teeming with all kinds of wildlife. And also there's the Ngorogoro Crater, which is considered to be the Eden of Africa. But in the midst of all of this beauty is a grim reality. You see, about 35% of the population are Muslim. If we were to take all of the Muslims who live outside the borders of Tanzania and south of the equator in Africa, they would not equal the number of Muslims who live within the borders of Tanzania. And then about 35% of the population are nominal Christians. More than 92% of Tanzania's population practices some form of witchcraft with many Christians still going to witch doctors. And then about 30, about 20% of the population are pure animists, worshiping the spirits in rocks, trees, rivers, you name it, they worship it. But in the midst of all of these dark realities that oppressively tower over Tanzania as Goliath did over Israel, the Lord has raised up the Tanzania Assemblies of God for such a time as this. Since 2009, this praying, fasting, Bible-believing, Christ-centered, spirit-filled church has experienced phenomenal growth, as Pastor Jeff shared with you, from a half a million to three and a half million members, from 2,800 to 13,000 pastors and churches, and from two to 12. Tanzania Assemblies of God, or as we say for short, TAG Missionary Families. And together with your partnership, the Tanzania Assemblies of God is strategically planning to grow to 25 million members, 40,000 churches, 45,000 pastors, and 200 Tanzania Assemblies of God Missionary Families by 2033. All of this is taking place under the strong leadership of our TAG General Superintendent, Dr. Barnabas Mtokambali, who is also the chairman of the Africa Assemblies of God Alliance. When he was 19 years old, studying in school, a man walked up to him and said, you know, you will read that science book from cover to cover, and you will finish it. But I have a book that you will never finish, and it will transform your life for all eternity. He started reading the Bible. He gave his life to the Lord, was baptized in the Holy Spirit, and began sharing the gospel. In 1986, he planted his first church in Morogoro, Tanzania, which he continues to pastor even today as the top leader of the Tanzania Assemblies of God. From that one church, he has now planted more than 300 daughter churches and has raised up 85% of the pastors for those churches. What he has done at a local church level, he is now doing at a national and continental level as he leads the Tanzania Assemblies of God and the Africa Assemblies of God by example. As he leads and pastors other Tanzanians to Christ, his strategic plan mandates that each Assemblies of God member reach and disciple at least one Tanzanian, at least one African each year. As Dr. Mtokambali raises up and mentors 15 to 20 pastors every year, he expects each Assemblies of God pastor to raise up and mentor at least one other pastor every three years. And as his church in Morogoro plants 20 to 30 churches on a yearly basis, the Tanzania Assemblies of God and Africa Assemblies of God strategic plans call for every church to plant at least one daughter church every three years. 
What Dr. Tokambali, the Tanzanian Assemblies of God, and the African Assemblies of God are doing is envisioning Tanzania for Jesus, Africa for Jesus. They are living and dreaming God's dream as seen in Habakkuk 2.14 and Isaiah 11.9 of the earth being filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. This is the basis of their vision. It fuels their passion and guides their strategic planning in reaching Tanzania and beyond, reaching Africa and beyond for Jesus. They love Jesus, and they long for his kingdom to come, his will to be done on earth, in Tanzania, across Africa, as it is in heaven. In the midst of Tanzania's 150 tribes and 55 million Tanzanians, in the midst of Africa's 3,000 tribes and 1.3 million Africans, the Tanzania and the Africa Assemblies of God are playing the music that Jesus composed. They are dancing the dance that Christ gave them, and they are singing the new song that he placed in their hearts. Psalm 96 joyously mandates that we sing a new song to the Lord. What is this new song? We read about this new song in Revelation 4 and 5. We're surrounding the throne of God and the Lamb who was slain and yet lives forevermore are the four living creatures and the 24 elders along with the angelic host of heaven and all of creation. And they sing, blessing and honor and glory and power belong to the one on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. They sing, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessing. For you were slain, and your blood rescued people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. You are worthy, O Lord our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and they exist because of you. And they cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was, who is, and who is to come. It's the song Isaiah heard in Isaiah 6 where he saw the Lord high and lifted up and his presence filled the temple. He heard the angelic beings singing, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. As a result of seeing the holiness of God, Isaiah repents of his sins and is cleansed and is forgiven of his sins. He then hears the Lord call out for someone to go and sing this new song to the Lord among the nations. Isaiah commits himself to the Lord and is commissioned to go and preach, that is to sing this new song. It's the new song that we are to sing to the Lord in worship and that we are to sing among the nations, among our co-workers, our classmates, our neighbors, and our family members as a witness and testimony of God's gospel, the good news. When we take 30 seconds at the gas station to share with the person on the other side of the pump that Jesus is the King of kings and the Lord of lords, that he is the creator and savior of the world, that he took upon himself the judgment and punishment for our sins so that we can be forgiven, set free, totally changed, and filled with the goodness of God. That 30 seconds will change their lives for eternity. You see, Romans 1.16 says that the gospel is the power of God into salvation. It does not contain the power of God. It is the power of God unto salvation. This good news, it supersedes, it surpasses, it subverts that of CNN, MSNBC, Facebook, Twitter, Google, Amazon, and even that of Fox News and Newsmax. It's the only good news that defeats the power of evil, sin, and death and resurrects the dead. It brings to nothing the religions, idols, and gods of the nations. It sets the sinner free. Hallelujah. So instead of us complaining as we wait in the long lines at Walmart, we can share with those in front and behind us how Jesus has saved us and how he wants to save them. 2 Corinthians 2.16 bears out that our witness is never in vain. That he will use our proclamation of the gospel as a witness against those who reject it and as the very means of bringing salvation to those who receive Jesus. You see, our lives as believers are the stench of death to those who are rejecting Christ and the very fragrance of life to those who are receiving him. 
Psalm 96 verses 1, 9, 11, and 12 says, Let the whole earth sing to the Lord. Let all the earth tremble before him. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest sing for joy before the Lord. How do we let the whole earth sing to the Lord? We do so by our testimony, by our witness, by singing this new song to the Lord throughout the whole earth, sharing the gospel. That is our singing this new song among the nations is the key to the whole earth, all of Africa, singing to the Lord. We sing this new song where it is not being sung so that those who are not singing it might join in with us around the throne of God singing this glorious new song to him. You see, Revelation 4 and 5 is not just a future reality. It is a present reality. It is what is taking place right now. As we are gathered here in Urbandale, we are also gathered around the throne of God singing this new song to the Lord. Ephesians 2, 6 says that we in the nasty here and now are seated with Christ in heavenly places. We go into the darkness of this world while we are at the same time seated with Christ in heavenly places gathered around his throne. As the people of God, as the temple of God, as his church, we bring Jesus into the darkness of our world. So as we are gathered around the throne singing this new song to the Lord, we move out among the nations into the darkness of the world, singing this new song among them. I'm reminded here of our TAG pastors, like our dear friend, Pastor Anna, who graduated from one of our 71 TAG church planning schools, moved out among the Wabeta bike tribe on the backside of nowhere, and planted a TAG church among them in the village of Kutish. This is truly amazing because the Wabeta bike tribe is a warrior tribe, much like the world-renowned Maasai tribe. A big difference between these two tribes is that as a rite of passage to manhood, Maasai boys are expected to kill a lion. While Betabite boys, however, are commissioned to kill a man from another tribe. And now the raw Betabite tribe, this fierce and murderous tribe, is coming to Jesus. We were with Pastor Anna doing an open-air children's service with a ministry team from the U.S. The service was interpreted from English to Swahili to Kibetabite because the older generation does not know Swahili. After we finished praying with the children, as we were packing up our sound equipment, about a dozen older Wabetabite men and women came forward for prayer and salvation. And this is what happened. This woman is not praying in her mother tongue, he better bike. She has been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Speaking in tongues, singing a new song to the Lord because of your prayers, because of your support, New Hope. What the Lord did in the life of this woman and what many would call the backside of nowhere, he wants to do so here today in your life right here in Urbandale, Iowa. And you may be watching from home. The Lord wants to do in your life, there in your living room, there in your car, just what he's done in these people's lives, in this woman's life. He wants to forgive you as he forgave these Wabetabite men and women. He wants to save you and fill you with his Holy Spirit. He wants to put a new song in your heart to sing to the Lord among the nations. The Lord wants to use you to preach his gospel and to reach the lost just as he is using Pastor Anna. Psalm 96 verses two, three, and 10 commands us to sing to the Lord, to praise his name, to each day proclaim the good news that he saves, to publish his glorious deeds among the nations, to tell everyone about the amazing things he does, and to tell the nations the Lord reigns, because he does. He is King of kings, and he is Lord of lords. He's the God of the universe, worthy of our praise. 
worthy of our worship. Sharing this good news is not optional for us as the church or for us as individual believers. Why? Psalm 96 verses 4, 10, and 13 tell us why. Because the Lord is great. He is most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. Because the world stands firm and cannot be shaken. The unshakable God created the unshakable world. And it reflects who he is. Because he will judge all peoples fairly. Because he is coming. He is coming to judge the earth. He will judge the world with justice and the nations with his truth. Psalm 96 verses 7 through 9 shows us how the nations should respond to this new song that we are singing among them. The nation's proper response is mandated by the Lord and admonished by those of us singing this new song to the Lord. How should the nations of the world respond? How should the nations, the peoples, the African tribes respond? They should recognize the Lord that he is glorious and strong. The nation should give to the Lord the glory he deserves. They should bring their offering to the Lord, come into his courts and worship him in all of his holy splendor. Psalm 96 verses 5 through 6 shows us why the nations should respond this way. Because the gods of other nations are mere idols. But the Lord, he made the heavens. Because honor and majesty surround the Lord. Strength and beauty fill his sanctuary. But the nations cannot respond unless we as Christ's church make it our top priority to sing this new song among them. It's about discipling the nations to sing this new song to the Lord. It's about the nations taking the gospel to the nations. The gospel is that new song to be sung to the Lord from nation to nation, from everywhere to everywhere. This is priority one. now in over 50 countries building Bible schools, training centers, and we see the result of it in country after country after country as the nationals take the good news of Jesus Christ to their people. And that's what Priority One is, that's what we do, and we love doing it. Assemblies of God, World Mission, Priority One missionaries to Tanzania and beyond. Wendy and I, along with our children, work hand in hand with AGWM missionary evangelist Sam and Joyce Johnson, the founders and president of Priority One. As Sam shared in the video, Priority One empowers church planning movements like the TAG to raise up and equip their pastors to do the work of the church. In other words, Priority One empowers churches of other nations to sing this new song to the Lord so that these church planning powerhouses for Jesus are fully equipped to admonish nations both near and far 
to recognize and worship the lamb who was slain and yet lives forevermore. Priority one is all about letting the whole earth sing to the Lord so that the earth may be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Priority one has been working in over 50 countries on five continents with one priority of building Bible schools and training centers that help churches of other nations deliver the good news of Jesus Christ to their own people and to people everywhere. Sam's very first AGWM Priority One Bible College was built in Portugal. From there, Priority One has helped build Assemblies of God Bible Colleges in Albania, Russia, Belarus, Ethiopia, Malawi, Nigeria, Togo, Mozambique, Liberia, the Philippines, Bangladesh, Romania, Georgia, Botswana, Cambodia, Burkina Faso, Tanzania. Through your partnership with us as AGWM, Priority One missionaries to Tanzania and beyond, water wells are being drilled, classrooms are being built, dormitories are being constructed, chapels are being added, much needed BGMC libraries are being renovated and expanded and so much more is being accomplished, including the development of 71 church planning schools and seven Bible college campuses, which are strategically positioned across Tanzania. Since 2009, these schools have graduated more than 10,000 newly called pastors, men and women, young and old, who are being sent out to plant churches throughout Tanzania, across Africa, and around the world as shown in this ordination service. This is the fruit of New Hope's investment in church planting movements in Tanzania, across the continent of Africa, and in countries around the world. Your partnership with AGWM and Priority One is empowering churches like the Tanzania Assemblies of God to proclaim the good news that Jesus saves. You are empowering the Tanzania Assemblies of God and the Africa Assemblies of God to nurture the call of God upon the lives of thousands of newly called pastors who are planting thousands of churches as they sing this new song to the Lord among the nations. Hallelujah. I'm talking about pastors like our dear friend, Pastor Katema, who left his work as a gemstone miner to sing a new song to the Lord, planting churches in the Islamic region of Kondoa, which Tanzanians call the Little Sudan of Tanzania. Pastor Katema, he would walk four days and three nights one way to reach the villages of this region. Since the late 90s, he has planted nine churches in Kondoa. He has planted these churches facing fierce opposition from Islamic leaders and attacks from wild animals. In the Muslim village of Chandama, three lions surrounded him as he slept under a tree in the wilderness. The villagers, they refused to allow him to sleep in Chandama because they knew that he wanted to plant a church among them. These very same lions, they attacked the villagers of Chandama, killing a small child. The village leaders, they feared that the evil spirits were punishing them for their mistreatment of this good man named Pastor Katema. So they went out looking for him, calling out his name, thinking that the lions may have killed him as well. To their amazement, Katema came walking up out of the African bush, alive and totally unharmed. He told them that he had not seen the lions, they asked him if he had seen the lions in the night, and he told them that he had not seen them, but that he remembered some dogs surrounding him in the night, sniffing him. Because he was so tired, he just curled up a little bit more, pulled the covers over his head, and continued to sleep there on the ground. When they went to where Pastor Katema slept, they found not dog, but lion paw prints all around where he had slept. God had miraculously spared his life. It's a modern day Daniel in the lion's den story. The Muslim leaders, they were so awestruck that they gave Katema a plot 
for a TAG church, and they even gave him a place to live. Hallelujah. Today, we have a vibrant TAG church singing a new song to the Lord in the Muslim village of Chandama, which is now planting daughter churches throughout Kondoa. What a marvelous investment you are making. And what a glorious return you and the Lord are receiving on that investment. Thank you, New Hope. You see, it's all about Christ being glorified with, with the resurrected nations, full of resurrection life, gathered around his throne, singing a new song in worship to the one and only victorious, exalted, resurrected, crucified Christ. You may be here this morning in need of the Lord's help, but you may think that the Lord will not rescue you as he did Pastor Katema because of the life you have lived. You may be watching there in your living room or even there in your car or at your office and you think that the Lord doesn't see you, he doesn't care for you. Got great news for you, he loves you. He loves you this morning. Psalm 107 speaks of four different groups of people who found themselves in desperate situations as Pastor Katema did. Verse four speaks of those who wandered in the wilderness, lost and homeless, hungry and thirsty. They nearly died. Verse 10 mentions others who sat in darkness and deepest gloom, in prison and iron chains of misery, with no one to help them because of the rebellion against the word of the Lord. Does that describe your life this morning? Verse 17 reveals how some were fools and who rebelled and suffered for their sins. They couldn't stand the thought of food and were knocking on death's door. Are you knocking on death's door this morning? And verse 23 tells of those who went off to sea in ships sailing the trade routes of the world. Their ships were tossed to the heavens and plunged to the depths because of the winds and waves. They cringed in terror. They cringed in terror and were at their wit's end. Do you find yourself at your wit's end this morning? You will also find the Lord there. You'll also find him there as you're knocking on death's door. For he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. In all four situations in verses 6, 13, 19, and 28, these four groups of people, they cried out to the Lord for help in the midst of their trouble. And in these very same verses, we read that the Lord heard them rescuing and saving them from their distress. This morning, do you find yourself in, the need, in need of the Lord's help? Do you need him to rescue and save you? Then cry out to him. Cry out to him for help as these did, as Pastor Katema did, for himself and for the salvation of Chandama. He hears your heart's cry, and he is so ready to rescue, save, and deliver you and your family. This morning, how many of you can testify that the Lord has saved and redeemed you? That he has already placed a new song in your heart to sing? If that is true of you, I want you to raise your hand. You may want to raise both hands to the Lord right now. Just keep your hand raised right now. Psalm 107 verse 2 says that if the Lord has saved and redeemed you, then speak out and tell others that the Lord has saved and redeemed you from your enemies. We have every reason to boldly and unashamedly sing a new song to the Lord among the nations to witness to those around us. May we not keep this good news bottled up inside of us within the four walls of this church. May we go out this morning into this world and be the light and witness that he's called us to be among the nations, among our family members, co-workers, our classmates. May we unashamedly, boldly share this glorious good news with them. May we sing this new song and worship to the Lord among them. This morning with heads bowed and eyes closed, how many of you cannot say that the Lord has saved and redeemed you? But you are right now longing in your hearts for the Lord to rescue and place a new song in your hearts to sing to him. If this is true of you, here or watching online, I want you to raise your hand right where you're at. We want to pray with you this morning. Lord, you see those who are raising their hands. God, they're crying out to you for help. You are the God who hears us. 
and you're the God who saves us. God, they're crying out that you would come and that you would drive out the darkness from their life, that you would drive out the sin from their lives, that you would cleanse them, and that you would place your new song within their hearts, that you would drive out the old song and place your spirit within them, that they might sing this new song to you. Use them, oh God, for your glory. Work your good work in and through their lives, we pray. We thank you, God, for saving them, for making them your very own, for making them your children.